This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Grace to you and peace in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And welcome to worship at the First Presbyterian Church of Warminster. And a special welcome to those who worship with us through WRDV FM radio. Since tomorrow is Veterans Day, we will honor the many veterans in our congregation and in our listening area with a special postlude at the end of today's service. Our liturgist is Megan, and our musical gifts are offered by Kathy Worth Balkus on organ and piano, Frank Balkus on saxophone, and our children's choir conducted by Jonna Iser. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Worship now begins with the sounding of the chimes. Before turning to scripture, let us pray. Gracious God, may your spirit give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded. In Christ's name we pray, amen. 
Ruth chapter 3 verses 1 through 5 and chapter 4 verses 13 through 17. Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, I need to seek some security for you, so that it may be well with you. Now here is our kinsman, Boaz, with whose young women you have been working. See, he is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. Now wash and anoint yourself and put on your best clothes and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, observe the place where he lies. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down, and he will tell you what to do. She said to her, All that you tell me, I will do. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. When they came together, the Lord made her conceive, and she bore a son. Then the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, who has not left you this day without next of kin and may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age, for your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons, has borne him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him in her bosom and became his nurse. The women of the neighborhood gave him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse, the father of David. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 24 through 28. For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself again and again, as the high priest enters the holy place, year after year, with blood that is not his own. For then he would have had to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once, and after that the judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly awaiting him. <laughs>
Our gospel lesson today is from the 12th chapter of Mark, verses 38 through 44. As Jesus taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watch the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Three widows feature prominently in today's Old Testament and gospel lessons, Ruth, Naomi, and the unnamed woman in the Jerusalem temple. Last week, I pointed out how in biblical times, widows were among the most vulnerable people in society, along with the poor and with refugees and foreign migrants which is why God commands his people to go out of their way to care for them. Ruth is perhaps the most famous widow in scripture, at least the most famous name, named widow, because Ruth exemplifies the phrase coined by one of my colleagues, which I mentioned last week, which is that we are called to love without requirement to make sacrifices and to take risks for the well-being of others, not out of obligation, but out of self-giving love. Ruth loved her mother-in-law, Naomi, without requirement by refusing to leave her to fend for, himself, for herself when both of them had been widows without any hope for a future. Ruth had no obligation to stay with Naomi. In fact, the smart choice would have been to move back home to her father's house to find a new husband to give her children, hopefully sons to take care of her in her old age. But no, Ruth chose to risk everything for Naomi, even if that meant dying from starvation, homelessness, or worse. And then today we skip all the way to the joyful resolution to their dilemma when a distant relative of Naomi's dead husband steps in to save these two poor widows from their predicament by marrying Ruth and giving her a son and Naomi a grandson. The man's name is Boaz. And we are told earlier in the story that he is very rich. He's got a lot of property. And it's on one of his properties that Boaz first discovers Ruth while she's gleaning from the grain fields to feed herself and Naomi. He promises Ruth a job and his protection. And when she asks him why he's being so kind to her when he doesn't have to, he says that he has heard all about what she had done for Naomi and he wants to do likewise. In other words, Ruth's generosity inspires Boaz to follow her example. Now, while mother-in-law Naomi may be a poor, helpless widow, she is one smart lady. Because once she hears of Boaz's 
kindness. She wastes no time in playing matchmaker to bring him and Ruth closer together so that by the end of the story, she has a grandson who will grow up to look after her. Now that's a happy ending if there ever was one. But there is an even more important outcome because the narrator, narrator tells us something that Ruth, Naomi, and Boaz don't yet know, which is that this child, Obed, will become the grandfather of none other than King David. And we all know that King David is the ancestor of Jesus, which means that Ruth and Naomi's loving each other through loss, famine, and poverty, not only brings blessings to them in the short term, but also for generations to come, including us. Turn to the first chapter of Matthew's gospel and you'll find a genealogy for Jesus that traces his lineage all the way back to Abraham. And as you read through the ge geology, ge genealogy, genealogy, you'll find that Ruth is given honorable mention in this family tree, which is extraordinary since most ancient genealogies list only the male ancestors. But there she is, Ruth, reminding us that Jesus's human heritage includes a poor widow who gave up everything in order to save someone else's life. Today's gospel lesson also includes a poor widow who gives up everything. Jesus and his disciples are hanging out in the courts of the Jerusalem temple, watching the wealthy believers making large donations into the temple treasury. And right before this moment, he accuses the religious authorities of corruption because they love hoarding all, all the honor and attention for themselves while ignoring the needs of poor widows. So this poor widow who puts everything she has to live on into the treasury is most likely one of their victims. And that might be what grabs Jesus' attention when he sees her. But why does he point her out to the disciples? What's he trying to teach them? Maybe he wants them to see her as proof of the corruption that he's been complaining about. But is she only a victim? Maybe he's showing the disciples that this poor widow is doing exactly what the rich young man couldn't bring himself to do, to give everything away to God. But then who in their right mind would ask a poor person to let go of their last two coins? She should be given money. Maybe the widow reminds Jesus of his ancestor, Naomi, and how she too might have died a poor widow if not for Ruth's sacrificial love for her. Or maybe Jesus looks at this woman and sees himself. Because this scene takes place just a few days before he dies on the cross. And just as this widow holds nothing back from God, neither will he. Look at her, he tells the disciples, look at her. This is what I've been trying to show you all along. This is who I am, and this is how I want you to live. Now to the one who so loved this world that he gave his only son, not to condemn it, but to save it. To God be all glory and power and honor now and forever. Amen.
with hopeful hearts, let us turn to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. We lift our voices and prayers of praise, holy God. For you have lifted us to new life in Jesus Christ. And your blessings come to us in generous measure. Especially we thank you for the privilege of worship and service. For the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ for us and for everyone. For food and drink to share in the Lord's name. And our calling to discipleship. And today, Lord, we thank you for our military veterans, men and women who served our country and protected our Constitution during times of both war and peace. May their unselfish service inspire us to give of ourselves for the sake of others. We hold up before you human needs, God of compassion. We pray for the healing of those who are facing medical interventions and procedures. We pray your comfort for the dying and the bereaved and for the renewal of hope in the hearts of those who are despairing. Loving God, you never fail to give us each day all that we ever need and even more. So give us such joy in living and such peace in serving Jesus that we may gratefully make use of all your blessings and joyfully seek our risen Lord in everyone we meet. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. God, who's given me no snow and deep from your rich and endless store, nature's Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord and to love and serve our neighbors. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Amen.